Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be giving an update on my health. I have my daughter sitting here playing because she decided she didn't want to nap. So if there's noise in the background, that is why. Also, do you like my fireplace? One of my favorite things lately is obviously plugging in the lights, the Christmas tree, and then putting on a playlist on YouTube of background Christmas music with the fireplace going on. We don't actually have a fireplace, so to me this just seems cozy. I have tried to film this video a couple times now. My brain fog... Thanks, hun. My brain fog has been really bad, so I can't even think properly. We'll see how this one goes. Hopefully I can get my point across and share what I need to share and that it'll all make sense. Please don't pull the lights. This is why it's easier to do it during nap time, but I barely got my devotions done before she woke up and she did not have a long nap at all. We're also still not sleeping, so I am extremely sleep deprived and trying to figure out how I'm just surviving at this moment. So forgive me if I just kind of seem all over the place. If you guys have not seen my videos from I guess pre-pregnancy, I talked a bit about my health. So I guess just a re Wow. So I'll just give a quick recap. I do have some notes here because I gotta keep myself on track. But I have had gut issues since I was a baby. It's always kind of been a part of my life. So that includes like the bloating, digestion problems, being really constipated, all of that fun stuff. And then when I entered the teenage years, got my period, they were... Honey, that's so distracting. Uh-huh, come here. And then when I was a teenager and got my cycle, they were extremely painful. I remember ending up in the high school bathroom floor, just not able to move because I was in so much pain. I remember spending so many days at home on the couch just trying to find relief. So this kind of went on for years. And then in 2016, when I got married, I went on birth control. I was on that for a year and a couple of months, I believe. Birth control just did not work well with me. I was struggling with mental health issues. I did not have a cycle for, I guess I should say, I got one a month into going on birth control and then I didn't get it at all through the whole time I was on it. Are you pulling on my shirt? Thank you. At that point, it was just causing quite a few issues and I knew I needed to stop taking it. So I did and I still wasn't getting my cycle. I can probably count on one hand how many periods I've gotten since 2016 until now. Fast forward a couple years, I still have no idea what my body's doing. I've spent so much time at different doctor's appointments, specialists, all these tests just came back normal, which was so frustrating because of course you don't want anything crazy to be wrong, but when you don't know what's going on and you're not feeling okay and they're like, oh, you're fine, just go home. Like that's not what you wanna hear. By January, 2018, I got a PCOS diagnosis and things started to make a lot more sense <laughs> given my history. Like I said, I've always struggled with digestion and stomach pain. I've had pelvic pain, fatigue, nausea, but this became chronic. This became, I can't function. Again, I had so many different appointments trying to figure out what's going on, no one could tell me. Finally, October 2019, I had my first laparoscopy surgery to check for endometriosis. They ended up finding tissue that resembled endo and said it was endo. And then the biopsy came back and said it was just inflammation. So they didn't really know what to tell me basically at that point. That was the lowest time in my life because I went through all of that just to be told we don't know what's going on, even though I firmly believed, and after all the research I've done, I knew that it was pointing to end. I joined a Facebook group called Nancy's Nook. They have lots of resources. I even sent in a surgical report, and they said get a second opinion. Felt so defeated, and I was like, I don't wanna deal with more appointments. I just mentally cannot handle this. And also keep in mind, I did actually get a cycle during my surgery in October. And then seven months later with no cycle, we conceived Sky. That was the biggest blessing 
I cannot even tell you. It took over two years to conceive and the fact that it happened naturally when I was told I probably wouldn't get pregnant naturally was just a god thing, complete god thing. Through pregnancy, I definitely had some relief of the endo-like pain, even the fibromyalgia-like pain, which I haven't seen anyone about for that. And that way, pregnancy really did help relieve a lot of things. On the other hand, because your organs are being squished and there's a lot, <laughs> sorry, she's just smiling at me, she's being really cute. The uh, digestive stuff still bothered me a lot of the time because, I mean, it happens to a lot of pregnant women where you feel backed up. But because I had a history of having a slow bowel, so they say, that was just something that was unpleasant. For the most part, things were okay. I had a little bit of pelvic, it wasn't the endo pelvic pain, it was the ow, you're sitting on a really bad spot kind of feeling. <laughs> to the point where I had like an injury on my left abductor and it still kind of comes and goes. I definitely pushed it in pregnancy and should have taken it much slower. Pain shooting down my legs, which is also something I experienced pre-pregnancy, but for the most part, a lot of my pain just chilled out. Then we had Sky. a few months later, I talked to the doctor that took care of me during pregnancy and she said, I can book you with a, another specialist and see what's going on, get a second opinion, which is what I was told a year ago. I got on the waiting list and Things just continued normally until I hit probably three or four months postpartum and I started to experience some of the pain again. It wasn't as severe or chronic as it was pre-pregnancy, but it definitely brought up a lot of trauma and like PTSD. I knew I needed to do something with my health. I ended up finding a protocol with a practitioner through Cellcor. It's a detox protocol couldn't get it out of my mind. I was praying about it. I don't know why it kept popping up and why I just kept thinking about it. I talked to Ken's. We decided, okay, let's just try it. Of course it's scary because you're investing a lot of money into something that you don't know for sure will work. This is something totally new to me. I just felt like that's where the Lord was guiding me to go and to take my next steps. By six months postpartum, I started a detox protocol. At first, I... I don't know, like I felt tired, I felt weak. I think a lot of it was because my liver was so sluggish and I just needed to open up those drainage pathways and really work on supporting those organs that were clearly struggling and backed up. The first few months, it kind of was just like, um, well, I mean, it takes a while to see progress. You typically sometimes feel worse or have weird herxing side effects to healing. So I just kind of just, okay, well, whatever. Let's just wait a bit and see how it goes. I don't know, it was probably like four months in and I was telling Ken's. I went through the list of symptoms I was experiencing pre-pregnancy and I'm not experiencing this, this, and this anymore, which was mind blowing. I still had things that were going on that weren't great, but I mean, I don't expect chronic illness, chronic pain to disappear in three, four months. I felt super encouraged. I ended up finding parasites that were leaving and getting out. Sorry, that's gross to some people. Sometimes I never know like how much to share because people might just be grossed out. But I took that as a sign of this is working. It was mind blowing. I mean, I know it sounds gross, but a lot of people say if you have a palsy of parasites, it's just the nature of how it goes. And parasites tend to hold on to toxins, infections, mold. It can also attribute to food intolerances, which I could not eat anything. There was literally, what, five to 10 foods that I felt like I could eat. I couldn't diversify my diet because everything made me hurt. So the fact that I was seeing these critters leave, to me was very encouraging, I know. Sorry if this grosses you out. Anyways, two weeks later after I'm noticing these leave, they probably have been coming out a while before that, but I just never really noticed, took the time to look. But by the time I noticed, it was probably, I don't know, four, four and a half months in. Two weeks after that, I noticed I was experiencing a lot of pain again, like pelvic, stomach pain, galore, joint pain, um, nerves, just everything hurt. And I was feeling really crampy, really crampy in my stomach and my back. 
and I was just wondering like what is going on I have not had a cycle since my surgery October 2019 and here I am what month is it? I guess it's December 1st now over a year a year and two months I'm just shocked I find myself on the bathroom floor again I can't walk I'm in so much pain and then I go from feeling really encouraged to really discouraged I honestly just had to remind myself that healing is not just a you know you go up and then you're totally fine healing is a lifelong journey there's seasons in your life where you're going to be dealing with stress trauma I'm not sleeping right now so I think that has a lot to do with it I also think there could be mold toxicity or infections that my body may be going through whatever it is but I had to remind myself that there may be seasons of flare-ups there may be seasons of things feeling like you're going one step forward two steps back I feel discouraged there's hope I truly believe that I just have this hope that I don't have to live in agony every day like I used to and I truly give all the glory to God because through this whole experience I have seen his hand at work but also in that two week point of having cramping and dealing with that pain I, I ended up getting my appointment my specialist appointment that I've been waiting for and I went to that appointment I was telling her my pain and she went through my surgery report and she said it's possible that your endo pain is coming back and she said that everything lines up with endo so I finally got a diagnosis it felt nice to finally be heard and understood I've heard a few theories with biopsies one is that the tissue that they take out can be missed I guess like it could be right beside where they actually excise um, I've heard if there's not wide enough the tissue that is taken out it can mess with the results of the biopsy and I also heard that I also heard if you don't have enough biopsies um, that can also give a negative false um, diagnosis because even if you have endo not all tissue is endo it's inflammation it's irritated by the surrounding tissue so oftentimes you need to have a decent amount because some will show up endo and some will just show up inflammation if you're in that spot and you deal with that just something that you may want to keep in mind she also did a pelvic exam which she could confirm there was muscle dysfunction there's also another name for tissue dysfunction I don't want to butcher the name she could confirm that there was all those three things happening along with an injury from birth which I feel like it's a long road to healing and there's a lot of pain still I am working with a pelvic physiotherapist and I feel like that's been great but I know there's still a long ways to go with this so that kind of just put me in a what do I do where do I go from here there's some things I need to pray about and figure out so anyways I'm struggling with cramping for two weeks I feel super off all of a sudden I wake up one morning and I got my period I know this sounds so silly to be crying about a period but I just remember cleaning up going to work out and that whole workout I was just in tears saying thank you Jesus thank you Jesus yeah thank you Jesus because when you don't get a period and when you feel absolutely horrible on your period it just felt like it was a two-edged sword right you'd want your period because that's a sign of health but then you didn't want it because you would be in so much pain that you couldn't function the fact that I woke up surprised to a period was huge and I was just feeling so so grateful because like is my health getting back on track this gives us an opportunity to hopefully not deal with infertility and conceive because I don't typically ovulate with PCOS which is why Sky was such a surprise and so I just felt so so grateful and to be honest those two weeks from ovulation till I got my period was worse than when I actually had my cycle like I have never felt this good during a cycle I felt super tired I mean I'm tired all the time sure all those hormones have something to do with it too but I felt super tired I felt a little bit crampy on the first day and a little bit second day hardly anything I felt more so like I said the two weeks prior 
and it wasn't super super heavy and i'm just like is this what it's like to have a normal period do i think that detox is worth it a hundred percent at this point i think i'm going to start focusing on regaining nutrients and taking things to help support my body so things like beef liver, magnesium, zinc. Those are just some nutrients that I want to start to focus on. This is just something I'm gonna have to pray and decide what to do and where to go from here. I just feel super grateful and all the knowledge that Cellcore has on these products is amazing and things like hormone issues, a lot of that has to do with your liver. Supporting that has been a huge help. This protocol also targets things like Lyme disease, Epstein-Barr viruses, mold toxicity, all of that stuff. Those are hard things to treat, so I think that this protocol is really, really just really amazing. They do have a ton of resources on their sister company, Micro Formulas, that's what it's called. But they have a ton of resources to learn from, which has been super interesting to me because I love learning about that. If that's something that interests you, you can definitely check it out. So that's where we're at now. I just got over my period, so now it's just a, okay, is this actually going to keep happening? Is this a fluke? I mean, it's my first postpartum period too, so I mean, things can be different too. I don't know. I just wanted to share because I want people to have hope that don't have to live with debilitating pain all day every day. I mean, I, I can't say that for everything, like of all the sickness in the world, but I just hope this gives someone encouragement that may be going through the same thing. My heart just truly breaks for people suffering and I know what it's like to go through pain and infertility and just be in a really low point mentally because your physical health is so bad. I just remember begging the Lord to take me home because I felt like I was a burden to everyone. I felt like I couldn't function anymore. It's lonely, it's isolating. I just want you to know that you're not alone and there are people who have struggled just like you. And whether we are fully healed on this earth or not, we can look forward to the day where Jesus gives us perfect bodies when he returns and brings us home. I just pray and hope for you that you are encouraged and that you have hope in whatever you're going through. It could just be circumstances in your life, not even just physical pain. I think that's the gist of it. I feel like I've been talking for a long time, so I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there are any prayer requests you'd like me to pray for, you can always ask in the comments or even send me a message. I really love connecting with you guys. And it's been so fun. And it's been fun to get to know you guys from social media. I hope you have a blessed day and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye guys.